You may have heard that we have today more scientists alive than, than all previous mankind put together. And you may well ask, what are they all doing? <laughs> and uh, the answer will come back, they're all solving problems. <coughs> now you might get really worried, aren't we running out of problems, but no, don't worry about that. <laughs> we have them bigger and better. That is due to the fact that we, we take a, a violent approach to the sol uh, solving of problems like taking a big sledgehammer and cracking the nut so that it f flies in all directions. And we have 12, see the 12 new problems. And then we take 12 sledgehammers. That, that's called exponential growth. <laughs> Now, if, if this is so, too big, too complex, too expensive, and too violent, so then let's look in the opposite direction. Are we really so daft, so incompetent, that we can't uh, find uh, solutions to our problems with rather smaller equipment, simpler equipment, cheaper equipment, deploying a soft technology? A technology that works with nature and doesn't bludgeon her all the time. Now this is the approach of uh, intermediate technology or alternative technology. A new direction of looking. It's not a definition of something in particular. It's a new and uh, different direction of looking. To correct the over-exaggerated development of the last 50 or 100 years. Not to throw away any science, but to use science in a more humane way. To my little book, which uh, uh, some of you have seen, I gave the subtitle Economics as if people mattered. Economics was being pursued, is being pursued as if the last thing you think about is the people. You think about production. You think about the balance of payments. You think about inflation, but you never think about people. You think by thinking of those technical things, you are thinking of people, but you don't. You say, here we have to rationalize. So many people are thrown out of work. What becomes of them? Oh, well, these are the social consequences. Yes, somebody has to attend to this. That's not a starting point of thinking, but uh, it comes later. <clears throat> now, one of the most interesting developments in, in, in this society, and in some others, uh, goes under the name of technology assessment. Namely, that people have grown wise to the fact that technology is being used, developed, possibly in the wrong directions, and before any great new program or project is launched, they want it assessed. The whole question is, how do you assess it? Now, I would propose that uh, four questions should be asked in this assessment. The first two relate to humanity. After all, it isn't worth doing anything officially with taxpayers' money or other people's money of any kind unless it is related to the problem of poverty. The rich in all consciousness don't require help. It's the poor that require help. We don't have to launch projects so that the rich can become richer. They can, on the whole, quite adequately look after themselves. But we need projects and programs, even technological developments, to fight poverty. So this is the first question that ought to be addressed to any project or program. What is its relevance to poverty? Now, when I say poverty, we think mainly of, uh, of the body. But uh, the second question is, what is its relevance to the mental and spiritual health of mankind? Because after all, we don't only have a body, we also have something more. And if the technology is of a kind that those who work it, or that its effect is that it drives them or us bonkers, then we don't want it, then it gets a very very low rating or negative rating on this second question. What does it do for the spiritual and men mental health of humanity? If it in involves uh, assembly belt production, 
or any other demeaning, degrading labor, or mind-boggling, mind-killing labor, then it gets a negative rating. That's the second question. The third question to be addressed is, what does it do to living nature around us? Now, living nature is, is very tolerant, but uh, it, uh, she has been warning us over the last two decades, look, you're, you're going too far. I can't take much more. And hence, we have the ecological crisis. And the fourth question obviously has to be, it relates to non-living nature around us. What is its relevance to energy, the energy problem, or other uh, problems of non-renewable raw materials? Now, if we address these four questions, if they take root in the consciousness of the people at large, and they hammer these questions in a similar way as the question, what does the technology do to the physical health and safety of the worker has been hammered. After all, it's not the first time that new criteria are, are developed. If we do that, then we might be able to, 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 to enforce the development of a more humanistic and more natural and more soft and altogether more intelligent technology. In all these matters, the dynamic factor of society is what? It is the creation and utilization of new knowledge, of new knowledge. And our intelligence, our capacity to create new knowledge is almost the most precious thing we have, and therefore we have to become extremely uh, sensitive to the abuse of this capacity. What is the abuse of this capacity? I will give you an example. I pulled out of a prominent magazine, you find it in many other magazines, uh, an advertisement. You can't see it at the distance. It shows father, mother, and two small children and a dog absolutely horror struck. And the heading is why horror movies are more horrible on the Quintrix two color picture tube. This is published by a company who call themselves Panasonic, just slightly ahead of our time. <laughs> it's really worth anybody's while studying advertisements because you see what they take you for. The next thing after this terrible picture is a, a, a bit of science an extra pre-focus lens for sharpness plus an inline tube for brightness and contrast and then some pseudoscientific drawing which nobody can understand but it, 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 knocks, <laughs> it knocks you over and, and then it goes on blood is bloodier, fangs are sharper, claws are crueler <laughs> You will, you will love it. <laughs>